The Half-Life series explores numerous scientific and human-centric concepts, with the interplay between the two being foundational to its themes. This is especially true when it comes to its central antagonist, the Combine Empire, using its superior technology to strip people of their humanity. The games presenting these concepts through the lens of oppression works well to explore these themes while invoking the existential horror of technological posthumanism. Technological posthumanism involves efforts to directly alter the social, psychological, or physical structures and behaviors of the human being through the development and application of technologies relating to genetic engineering or neurocybernetic augmentation. This is studied as an aspect of cyborg theory. The relatively recent acceleration of technologies related to technological posthumanization have generated a lot of debate among researchers and policymakers. There are those that view the processes of posthumanization as potentially leading to a more meaningful and advanced transhumanistic future for humanity, but its bioconservative critics warn that such processes may lead to a fragmentation of human society, loss of meaning, and subjugation to technology. The Combine Empire complicates these concepts significantly, but in a way that settles the debate, at least in relation to the games, because the biomechanics, genetic engineering, and neurocybernetics it subjects people to are not to their benefit. They instead act only to turn people into obedient soldiers and slaves. The technology strips, rather than elevates, the essential human element from the person. It is the worst case scenario when it comes to the potential of these technologies. The Combine being an interdimensional cosmic force that subjugates and augments species across the multiverse is also in of itself a critically important consideration here. That's because a central tenet of posthumanism is challenging anthropocentrism, meaning the belief that human beings are the central or most important entity. Because of that, both technological and non-technological posthumanization involves de-anthropization. This is when society gets expanded to include other types of entities besides natural or biological humans. These other entities also contributing to the structures, dynamics, and meaning of the society in such a way that its biological human participants are no longer at the center. A common theme of posthuman study is the way in which the processes of posthumanization challenge or blur binaries, including concepts like human versus non-human, natural versus artificial, alive versus non-alive, and biological versus mechanical. It's also a question that comes down to participation, as our society still has animals like pets and livestock, as well as very rudimentary thinking machines. But no one is likely to see these entities as participating to the same degree as humans or in such a way that humanity wouldn't be considered at the center. The combined subjugation of Earth didn't just dethrone humanity as its dominant species, it also directly challenged our place in the universe and our understanding of which. For the first time since the Neolithic period, humanity wasn't the dominant force in known reality. It was a complete process of posthumanization that superseded philosophical considerations through forcing the issue into scientific reality via oppressive control. The technological aspect comes into what it did to people once it had successfully subjugated them. This distinction is important in how it contrasts with similar ideas around transhumanism. This is because those competing ideas still take a very human-centric view as it describes the intellectual movement advocating for the enhancement of the human condition by developing and making widely available technologies that can greatly enhance longevity, cognition, and well-being. The combined approach to augmenting humanity is clearly not the least bit concerned with the humanistic element, it instead is evolving humanity to be gears and cogs lost within the grinding mechanisms and machinations of its great and terrible military machine. It appears to do this with all species of subjugates as well as the technologies they steal along the way. The Empire even appears to be agnostic in its view between living organisms and technology, it instead is simulating the useful elements of either into its conglomeration of augmented organisms. Those biological, psychological, or technological Logical elements not deemed useful are disregarded. Essentially, the memories of your wedding or child are wasting space that could be instead filled with propaganda and combat skills. Maybe your organs are deemed inferior to artificial replacement. That being said, transhumanism is often used interchangeably with posthumanism, so the distinction is usually only needed for more granular discussions. For instance, the games use the term transhuman to describe humans that have undergone combine alterations, whether willingly or not. It's also these transhumans that represent the first real step along the new evolutionary path humanity has been forced down. 
Combine Overwatch soldiers are the most forward-facing examples of what a transhuman is. Though the extent of their physical alterations are most often hidden beneath combat armor and gas masks, the standard soldiers are complemented by various higher and specialty ranks that together make up the bulk of the Combine occupying force on Earth. This makes sense as transhumans would be the best equipped for that environment being altered versions of humans. This occupying force is further complemented by altered or otherwise artificially created alien species known as synths. The synths themselves are a very interesting look into the greater operational structure of the Empire and its potential future plans for humanity. The term describes a class of self-replicating cybernetic organisms and biomechanical constructs that operate as part of the Combine. They are recreated artificially, or otherwise forcibly evolved, from species that have been conquered by the regime. They perform a variety of functions, including being the backbone of the Combine invasion forces, like the one that conquered humanity during the Seven Hour War. Synths typically appear as large insectoid or anthropodal creatures, but even then there's a very diverse range of appearances and abilities that echo how many civilizations must have been absorbed into these forces, but they are also all united by being physically and mentally altered into obedient slaves. In fact, it is highly likely these creatures are now so fully integrated that even their biological components are artificially created alongside their mechanical ones. The combine structure is interesting in this regard as it would imply an autonomous task and purpose oriented approach to organizing as opposed to a purely hierarchic approach. Since this series only really shows the occupying force on Earth, it's impossible to draw firm conclusions on its greater operational presence across the multiverse, but it's quite possible that the Empire acts as a collective will without a clear and direct leadership, the exception being those conquered civilizations that haven't yet been fully integrated like humanity. Though it should be noted certain functions could put entities in more powerful positions, such as advisors being the inter intermediaries between the overworld and their appointed human administrator on Earth, Dr. Wallace Breen, but this would likely be more so due to their unique abilities as a species being best suited for that role. This also isn't to say all entities integrated into the Combine are the same, that's actually far from the truth as the Combine allows a massive degree of unique and independent functionalities. This actually makes them a lot more practical than other examples of assimilated societies in science fiction that also force uniform reality. Rather, these entities are conditioned and altered to obediently serve a role within the system System, including an apparent ability to operate independently so long as it is the most utilitarian use of that entity to serve the collectivist will. The Combine in that regard doesn't just displace humanity as an inherently important entity, it does that for all organisms and technologies that get caught in its expansionist churn until their only point is forever advancing the will of the machine. The Combine in that sense isn't just the ultimate expression of technological posthumanism gone wrong, as the same concept could be applied to life itself, but the soldiers stationed on Earth don't all undergo this process at the same rate, the games highly suggest humans undergo more alterations the further they go up the ranks. The lowest ranks of the Overwatch forces on Earth don't undergo any alterations, whether physically or mentally, or at least very few. The Metropolitan Police, for instance, are still purely human. They are also the ones most encountered by your average civilian since they have been tasked with keeping order in the cities most of humanity have been corralled into. It's from here members of these forces can advance through the ranks by undergoing alterations. Interestingly enough, this seems to be voluntary, at least in part. It's easy to assume plenty of soldiers are the product of oppressive force, but nevertheless, civilians are encouraged to join the police for privileges like better food rations and the ability to hang on to their family. Every rank after that is encouraged to be pursued by even more privileges until eventually they reach the most elite ranks at the expense of their humanity being completely purged. The process is brutal and civilians are often left with little choice given the oppressive conditions, but it's still interesting nonetheless how much seems to be volunteer based. Given how oppressive and brutal the Empire is, this policy does seem relatively humane. It is possible that this was the result of negotiations between the Combine Overworld and Breen, as they are seen not always being in agreement on how to control humanity. This may have just been the result of him pushing back against a completely oppressive approach to recruitment, assuming he could deliver results. The Combine soldiers are lucky though, when compared to other examples of how humanity has been forced to evolve, the most horrific known example being the Stalker. Stalkers are humans who have been drastically altered, both physically and mentally, through brutal surgeries by the Combine. They are slaves used for operating machinery and doing simple tasks. It's believed they do these things mindlessly, but the more horrific possibility they are aware of what is happening cannot be ruled out either. Their physical appearance reflects the extent of their forced alterations, with their malnourished bodies missing limbs, facial features, Features and genitalia. Any ligament still needed for work is replaced with easily controlled prosthetics so all they can use them for is their work. They also seem to be equipped with a feeding tube. It can be easily assumed the Combine only give them enough nutrition to live. These alterations are also what can be seen from the outside. The extent of their internal and mental alterations are likely far worse. 
It's also worth noting that this is much more a punishment than anything practical. Even the tasks they do are likely easily automated given the scope of Combine technology. The only reason not to automate them is to torture the stalkers with non-stop and dangerous work. They are people, whether aware or not, imprisoned in a tomb of horrific post-humanistic technologies. But the story doesn't outright reject the concept of technological posthumanism by nature of it being forced onto humanity. There's still room for a positive view, assuming a process is developed around helping people rather than enslaving them. Even if biological humans aren't at the center of society, that doesn't mean they cannot co-participate in a society with other forms of intelligent life or programming. This view also echoes one of the main messages in the series in that it warns scientific advancement can be both the savior or destroyer of humanity. The inciting action for the entire series was even a scientific experience experiment gone wrong, but this contention between scientific advancement and its potential consequences becomes a recurring theme throughout the series from there. This even manifests as a debate among certain characters with teleportation technology being what attracted the Combine to Earth, but also the best potential weapon to fight back. We have made, in secret, several technological advances which we will do our best to deploy in advance of the Combine's return. We continue to diligently assemble and train a new generation of scientists and technicians. For what the Combine fear the most is the not any away. tangible human At least weapon, the but with the our combine, will, much as they our intellect, up. our ability to respond selectively and rationally to every terror they turn against us. We place our firmest hope in the human spirit, even knowing how easily it may be shattered. We have all seen friends and family crushed by the Combine. Some of our neighbors have allowed themselves to be co-opted and purged of their humanity by the military machine. And those who resisted have met a most terrible fate. Still, I cannot overstate how important it is that we retain our humanity. Only this will allow us to hold together as we must for their inevitable return and what is certain to be unimaginable retaliation. The Combine reflects the extreme worst case scenario when it comes to technological posthumanism, so it's no surprise the horrors that has resulted in. But that potentially leaves humanity as the hope for a brighter posthuman future. Its leadership, after all, have shown their belief in science and an ability to work with other forms of intelligent life like Vortigaunts. But more importantly, they have fought to do these things without losing their humanity. Whether humans are the most important or not, maybe there is still something quintessential about humanity that's worth keeping wherever the future takes us.